right, everybody. Hail and welcome back to another episode of Midgard Musings. Thanks so much for joining me today. My name's Jesse, and I'm the host here on this channel. And if this is your first time tuning in, I want to invite you to please subscribe to the channel, first of all, if things pertaining to Norse heathenry or Germanic paganism, and usually what is nowadays referred to as also true, are things of interest for you. Subscribe to the channel, and if you don't want to miss anything, make sure you ding the bell for notifications, also on your mobile devices, so that way you get notified every time that I upload new content. Don't forget to check the description down below for ways that you can support Midgard Musings. I have a Linktree link, which is kind of like a one-stop shop. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can help support this channel through uh, Patreon subscriptions, uh, donations through PayPal, buy via coffee, I've got merchandise on Teespring. All that is down in the description area. Just click on the link tree and it'll take you to all those ways and see what fits you for ways that you can help support this channel. Alright, so today's video um, is going to sort of be like a recap. Uh, some things, some, some very important things that I wanted to uh, share with you all about uh, my wife's and my recent trip up to see my family in New York, where I'm from. Um, you probably haven't seen a whole lot of stuff come out either on Facebook or of course here on YouTube um, over the last couple of weeks because that's where I've been. Uh, I was spending time with family uh, because I only get to visit them like once a year um, for about a week, a little over a week at a time. So try to make the most uh, of my time there and take advantage of the opportunities that I had. And this particular trip was a very different one uh, from visits in the past and I want to talk about the reasons why they were different and key in on some things that I thought were very uh, relevant and that could be of some help to folks here that watch my content um, about my worldviews of, of heathenry not necessarily the overall worldview of all heathens everywhere because of course I'm not the end-all be-all of anything when it comes to heathenry this is just my view on things and the things that I'm learning and hopefully uh, things that I share will help you in your journey in heathenry and uh, paganism, whatever it is that you're doing out there. So uh, the things that I wanted to talk about today uh, were the nature of the trip, okay? Uh, the reason why I went up. Like I mentioned, um, I only get to visit my family, which is my mother, my father, my sister. I've got an aunt and uncle that live up there and some other very close friends of the family who I grew up around who became sort of like an extended family or as many of us in, in heathenry call our kith. Right? We have kith and kin. Kin being our blood family, kith being that sort of extended or adopted family as it were. So I have a lot of kith up there from over the years um, previously before I moved to Tennessee where I live now that I established a lot of, um, uh, tied a lot of weird with and established a lot of uh, frith with, right? Um, so I've done a video on this channel which I'm going to link up here somewhere in the corner. Um, probably going to be up here in the right hand corner of your screen, uh, an annotated card for a video that has got a lot of views here on my channel. It's probably one of the highest viewed or most viewed videos on my channel and it, it touches upon just, you know, how do we deal with family who don't agree with our, you know, religious views or our spiritual views, whatever you want to call them, our, our faith, right, our, us as heathens. I'm, not, I'm sure I'm not the only one who watches my videos and has family who either are still uh, following a different path, whether it be Christianity or Islam or any other sort of religion in the world that um, does not necessarily coincide or agree with the fundamentals of the worldviews that is typical within a Germanic pagan practice, right? Um, so that video was actually filmed in New York several years ago. And um, so this video that I'm doing right now, even though I'm not in New York, I'm talking about some things that happened during the trip that I feel are very important. Um, one of those things is when I went to visit this time, I had a very specific goal, right? I had a very specific um, reason to go there. And that was to help out um, my mother and my father very specifically on things that they needed to get done. Some chores um, and some very, you know, some, some very uh, weighty or, or difficult things for them to do at their age and in their stage of life, especially uh, given the fact that my father is in failing health um, due to cancer and he just can't do the things that he wants to do. His mind is willing and his body is, uh, is weak, so he can't do a lot of the things. And it makes it difficult for um, him and my mother to get a lot of things accomplished because of that. Um, so I was fortunate enough to be in a position to um, present a, a case and pre present myself in a way that was like, Dad, look, we gotta get this done. I'm going to be here, let's make the most of it. And fortunately, I was able to accomplish a lot of very needful things. 
Um, but the, the, the thing that I wanted to key in on is the fact that none of my family up in New York are, are pagan, okay? Matter of fact, I was raised in a very devout, uh, non-denominational Christian faith. Um, so their views, the, 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 the fundamentals of their life, their worldviews is, is, is structured through a, a Christianity sort of thing, right? Yeah, it's not even sort of. It is very much according to that, right? If it's not in the Bible, if it's not the scriptures, if it's not the word of God, it's no go. So I've, I've dealt with that and I've, and I've faced that and I've basically walked to the beat of my own drum and, and doing things the way I do things despite the fact that this is, goes against everything that I was brought up to believe in. However, um, I'm still able to maintain communication with my mother and father and sister and um, it, it, it's pretty amicable, right? We, we don't agree on a lot of things uh, religiously, which I'm going to talk a little bit about here in just a minute, um, but we still are able to stay open communication. And I know that for a lot of folks, that is um, one thing that you want, but not something that you can get. Usually the religious thing, you know, the heads butt like this, and it, it causes a division, and it causes people to lose connections with their family and have those ties sundered, those threads, as you were, or as it were, those threads tied and weird uh, get torn and, and damaged and, and, and shattered. Uh, so I'm fortunate enough to have run through some rough patches, um, but been able to repair those things, and we still communicate. We still have that open-ended communication, and due to that, um, and due to my willingness to want to help, um, something happened that was very shocking for me, um, and it, it, it came in the form of aid from my uncle and aunt, who I don't talk to very frequently, uh, at least up to this point, because we have butted heads so strong, specifically my uncle and I. Um, in the past, we've had conversations um, of a religious nature, and it's just been like, dude, we can't, we're not gonna, we're not gonna mesh, we're not gonna come to a amicable sort of uh, view on things, we're not gonna agree to disagree, it's either one way or the other on that side, so I'm not going to pursue any further conversations along any lines if this is the way it's going to be. Um, and we stopped, like this was about a year, a little over a year ago, where, where my uncle and I specifically just stopped talking because of that. Um, and he and his wife are the ones who gave us a lot of, of much needed aid to facilitate things that needed to be done. Not just him, but people in the church community who I grew up in. A lot of the people who I mentioned earlier became and were uh, kith to myself and, and my immediate family. Uh, these aren't the terms that they use, but these are the terms that I'm using just to maintain that, that connection that my audience and you folks here that are watching would be able to understand. The extended family um, of my immediate, of my immediate inner circle. So um, a lot of folks came together during my visit um, who I hadn't spoken to in a long time and who haven't had any regular dealings with. They came together to help. And we, together, we were able to accomplish things that needed to be accomplished, things that were good. And when I say good, I mean good for the overall, for the tribe, right? For the, for the collective community. Um, I got, you know, my mother out of a situation where she was, you know, financially bound to do things every month and in the form of paying rent for a, a storage facility that was dilapidated and disgusting and just ruined things that were, you know, their own possessions. We're able to get her out of there. So a lot of good things were able to be accomplished. A lot of good was able to be done. A lot of, a lot of good was added to the well, okay? Um, and the reason why I'm sharing this with everybody is because those deeds, those actions, that work, those things that everybody did, the religious views aside, right? We all, we were able to come together and determine a mutual need for something. There was an, an action that needed to be taken and despite the fact that I'm pagan and they are Christian and all that, that was put aside and good was able to be accomplished. Um, so that's one thing that I wanted to bring up. The reason why I wanted to bring it up is because I think a lot of folks get tied up and connected in the religious part of things. The, you know, you don't believe in the same thing that I believe in, you know, so therefore we can't get along, we can't agree. Um, and look, I get it. That is a huge thing. That is a big thing that just basically shuts things down for most, or at least a lot, of families, right? When you have differing views, you have one side that wants to try and you know ram things down the other's throat, or you have this side who's being so staunch to the point of being belligerent about their beliefs that they are uh, becoming hostile about it, and they and they almost encourage that division. Um, it just does a lot of damage, right? And it does a lot of 
it adds a lot of negativity and a lot of bad weird or a lot of bad to the well. You know, weird is weird and, and, and things are tied. And so when you've got that, that, that dirt or that muck or that oil that gets added to the clean water, it, 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 you have to purify. You have to let that stuff settle and you have to add good to, to, to cleanse it out again. So I guess the reason why I wanted to share that particular part with everybody is that um, if you can and if you're able to, if, you, if you're in a situation where your family uh, or your loved ones even are, you know, of a differing view of your faith or your religious views, whatever, let's say Christian versus pagan, just as an example, um, maybe try to just leave that whole thing out of the equation, right? Just be, just exist, just live, just work together if you can. Can it happen all the time? Absolutely not. It's not always going to work no matter how much you may want it to. But if you stick with it and if you just say, you know what, look guys, I just want to help. I just want to be this thing. I just want to be that thing. Forget about our, our views. Let's just, the deeds, right? We are our deeds. You hear this a lot, especially in e There's a book called, by Eric Wodening called We Are Our Deeds that, that goes back to the, you know, the morals and, and, and uh, etymology of, of things that our Germanic ancestors in, in, in ancient Germanic times thought of and, and, and understood as being the way society could productively function. So if you get all the spirituality, all religious views and whatever out of it and just get back to the basics, get back to the deeds, how does society function? We function perfectly well together. We didn't talk about religion. There were some things that kind of got into that sort of discussion with my mom and I and even with my uncle, but it wasn't hostile. And when we reached a certain point, we were like, you know what, we're, we're at an impasse. We're not going to be able to get past our differences. We just said, you know what, we're not going to talk about it anymore. And we go on with our lives and we continue to, to work together to get things done. And that's where I think it comes back down to. You know, you can hail Odin this and you can hail Thor that and you can skull this and hail the gods and, you know, all this kind of stuff. Very important things for from a spiritual aspect in your own practices and things that you must do. But when it comes down to it, we are our deeds and what we do is the things that get added to the well. Our words, yes, they are they can, they can definitely um, be added to the well because things that are added to the well can be our, um, our physical deeds, our, our words, our, 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 our intent, that sort of thing. Um, but when it comes down to it, the, the deeds, the things that are being done, the works, as it were, you know, there's a popular um, cr uh, Christian verse that says, faith without works is dead. Um, but I, can, I, I can, that, that kind of resonates with me because you can say things all day long. You can, you can spout all verses and you can you know be able to recite grim the small front to back if you want um, doesn't mean anything in the long run if your actions if your deeds don't reflect what it is that you're saying and what you're spitting out so focus on the deeds focus on doing it focus on that and perhaps you may find that the religious views get sort of you know you're not gonna you know heathens and Christians have never been able to to meet in the middle right it's always been that way so, we're in modern times, we're not going to fight each other, at least I hope not. <laughs> um, it, does it get down to that? Does it get kind of hostile at times? Yes, of course, as I mentioned, you know, this is ideal, right? It's, it's what you may want, but can it always happen? No, it has to be both ways. It's a two-way street. You have to be able to want to uh, allow your relationships to, to continue in a, in a you know, productive sort of way, and, and the people on the other end have to want it also. So it's just a suggestion, think about it. Maybe it's something that you can focus on if in fact this is something that you, know, you and yours may, may, may struggle with. All right, and so the other thing that I wanted to talk about was the, nat like I talked about the nature of the trip was very different from the past. I've you know, gone up to visit my family now for the last several years, uh, regularly, annually. And um, this visit was different. I didn't get the sense of like m certain parts of my family trying to convert me or, or, or try to you know push their you know religious agendas or, or scripture verses or anything down. I'm trying to point it out that I'm wrong. Do I get the sense that they think that I'm wrong? Absolutely, that can't be avoided. But I get over it and I move on and we move on. Um, but this this visit was a lot different in the sense that I didn't get that like 
nagging feeling like I'm being scrutinized and I'm being looked at in a way. It was a whole lot more uh, wholesome and way more productive. And even the conversations, the nature of the conversations were not like, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. It was more like, hey, don't, don't, don't shut the book on us. Like they were saying that, like don't give up on us. Please keep with open-ended communication. Please stay connected. Don't write us off as being certain things out of the other, which is encouraging to me because I feel like it leads, it's going to lead to bigger and better things that are only going to add more good to the well. And when I talk about the well, I'm talking about the, you know, the, 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 the things that are going to become orlog for our descendants, right? In the now, in the Verdandi, you know, can't change the past, but what we do now gets added to the well now and our descendants pull from that. So adding that good, adding those positive vibes, those, you know, good conversations, helpful, wholesome deeds, things that help one another. My uncle and my aunt helped my wife and out tremendously in a monetary but and, and financial but huge sort of way. Um, and me understanding the, the whole gifting cycle thing, like a great gift was bestowed upon us uh, for this trip uh, to facilitate things. And I, you know, look to say to recompense that or to reconcile that in a way and say, what can I do? What can I give you? What do you like? What do you want? I obviously, you know, can't match the the the, the financial level that that they gave to us. But I was like, what can I do? And it's very interesting because the thing that my uncle told me um, in, in terms of like, well, we've done this for you. Here's what you can do to like, repay the kindness, if, as it were. And he even understands this. He's not a heathen at all. But he says, just what you set out to do, just do it. Accomplish what you want to do. Accomplish the goals that you know are good and right to do. And that will be payment. More payment than you can possibly think of. And it hit me. It hit me so strong because it's like, you know what, despite the fact that he's, you know, reading a, a Bible and he's fo fo focusing on, you know, scripture and, and it's his religious views are totally different from mine. He still understood and understands and appreciates the value behind deeds and works. Just do it. This is going to be good for both you and, and everybody else on this side. So like seeing that and experiencing that, I was like, yes, I can get behind that. And it, it, it only fueled the fire even more for me to want to be able to, to do those things. So um, these are a couple of things that I hope that everybody watching this video that may encounter similar situations with their family or loved ones, um, forget about the religious part of things. Don't try to say, you know what, Odin is, is the Allfather and, and Thor is the protector of Midgard and they're going to be like, well no, Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior and he's your, you know, if you don't accept him into your life, you're, you're, you're going to perish in, in eternity of hell and damnation. Get, get outside of those discussions. You're never going to be able to meet. You're not going to be able to, you know, have an amicable result. Focus on doing things that are going to add good to the wealth for you and there and in your own. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys today. And there's a couple things that I thought about um, at the end of this trip, some, some uh, stanzas from the Hobomol that I wanted to, to read real quick. And it's going to be from the uh, Dr. Jackson Crawford translation of, of Poetic Edda. So... Whatever translation you're reading, the stanza numbers may vary a little bit, um, but I'm going to go ahead and read a few stanzas uh, from the Hovamal and uh, let you guys know what I think. So here we go. All right, so like I said, this is going to be the Dr. Jackson Crawford translation of the Poetic Edda. So these are his, this is the translation of his uh, version of the Hovamal. Uh, and this is uh, stanzas 122 uh, through. 125. So it's towards the end of the poem. So we go, I counsel, I counsel you, Lord Fafnir, if you'll take my advice, you'll profit if you learn it. It'll do you good if you remember it. You should never exchange words with someone who won't see reason. You will never get a reward for speaking with a bad man, but a good man will make you happy with his praise. Men become friends when they can share their minds with one another. Anything is better than being lied to. A real friend will disagree with you openly. I counsel you, Lord Fafnir, if you'll take my advice, you'll profit if you learn it. It'll do you good if you remember it. Don't speak even three words with a man worse than you. Often, the better man will lose where a worse man or when a worse man fights him. 
You know, so I, I, I thought about those stanzas uh, or, or parts of the, the, the uh, Poetic Edda, <laughs> um, and those stanzas specifically came to mind, and it's like, they resonated with me, you know. We could speak words with a lesser person. We could, we could exchange words that are uh, between people who won't agree or, or lesser than us or whatever. Whatever the translation you're reading of, it's probably gonna, you know, the verbiage is probably gonna change slightly, but it t what took away from me is, you know, words are just words. Yes, there's power in the word, and yes, there's power in the in the spoken word, and there's magic in spoken word. Um, but ultimately, what it came down to me for this trip was the deeds that spoke. So much good was added to the well. So many positive things were added and, and done during this trip, and I and I feel like it transcended the fundamentals of, of religion. You know what I mean, like my spirituality didn't have anything to do well it kind of did just I'm sure just as I'm as I'm sure some of their spirituality some of their religious views had had a, had a kind of like a driving force or a catalyst behind what they did but ultimately at the end of the day we got stuff done things that were good for both sides and it didn't matter what our religious views were at the time so I encourage everybody to you know maybe take away something from this video and apply it to your own selves hopefully it will help in your relationships and if it does um, or if you have a specific situation that maybe you're struggling with and you want to get some of the you know feedback from from people that are watching these videos or whatever go ahead and leave a comment down below I am always interested in reading the comments I try to respond to everybody I always acknowledge your your uh, your comments so please head down to the comment se section and let me know uh, how if this video helped you out don't forget to like comment share and subscribe to these videos because it helps this channel grow and it helps not only this channel get shared out but channels like this so things that are pertaining to Norse heathen and Germanic paganism will get circulated more because it becomes more of like an algorithm thing and YouTube will be like well this person likes this they'll like that so you'll not only see more of my stuff but you'll see other like stuff as well so that's today's video I hope you guys enjoyed it thank you so much for supporting Midgard Musings continually hail and I'll see you in the next video